أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ومن شرور أنفسنا من سيئات أعمالنا ما يحدي الله فلا مضل له وما يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسول يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطيع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما فإن أستقى الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحديث حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدع وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار أما بعد What if What if today was the last day in Ramadan and this afternoon was the last time you would break your fast. And tomorrow was Eid. How would you feel? And I ask myself, how would I feel? What would be my thoughts and emotions? Would I feel like I blew it? Like I didn't take enough advantage? I still spent too much time following the news, watching TV, maybe even listening to music. I didn't come to the masjid enough. I didn't recite Quran enough. I missed too many fasts. How would you feel if today was the last day in Ramadan? Would you be full of regret? Would you have to tell yourself, okay man, don't think about it. Next year I'll try again. Actually next year it's gonna be harder. Are you scared of the fast? Is this your feeling? If so, would this be your feeling rather? Don't despair. We have two thirds of Ramadan left. We have 20 days left to make sure that when the last day of Ramadan comes and when Eid comes, we can celebrate, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا حَدَاكُمْ On the day of Eid, why do we do takbir? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Why do we do that takbir in a big chorus? Because we celebrate the change that we've made in Ramadan. So with 20 days to come, and with 20 more days, I call upon myself and you, take advantage, so that you're not disappointed. So that on the day of Eid, when you're saying the takbir, you have something to say takbir about. That you look back to these 30 days and you look at the beautiful change you've made in your life. That you took full advantage of Ramadan. You took advantage of every taraweeh. You took advantage of every opportunity to make dua when you're breaking your fast. And these, this month of Ramadan, as we know, it is not an end. It is not a goal. But it's a means to achieving a goal, which is to make a change in our life. So inshallah, the topic of today's khutbah is change. How can we make sure that this Ramadan, we make a change in our lives? First, I'd like to look at an example of three scholars who had very interesting beginnings as an example of how we can make great changes in our life. First, I'd like to start with a scholar by the name of Fudail, Rahimahullah. Fudel is a great scholar. If you Google him, you'll find so many beautiful statements. He was an ascetic. He was a man detached from this dunya and attached to the akhirah with a beautiful balance. But before he was a scholar and someone people looked up to, he used to be a robber. He used to be a thief. In the desert, you know, when you're traveling and if you're, if you're alone, you'd be scared because the high robbers would come after you. So he used to stand out and wait for people and jump on their caravans, take all their goods. He was a thief. In addition to that, he used to meet with a girl outside the city and commit relations with her. So he was a zani. And people were scared of him in his attitude and in the way he behaved. A very harsh person, a person very far from the deen. So obviously if he's committing zina, he's not praying salah, he's not fasting Ramadan, doing nothing with respect to Islam. Until suddenly, one day, he heard one verse from the Quran which changed his life. What was that verse? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَمْ يَأْنِي لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ 
الحق ولا يكون كالذين اوتوا الكتاب من قبل فطال عليهم الامد فقست قلوبهم وكثير منهم فاسقون He heard this verse and his life changed. And if we hear the translation of this verse, I hope your life changes too. Because these, this verse should rock your heart. It should shake your heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hasn't the time come for those who believe that their hearts should be shaken and they should be affected by the dhikr of Allah, by the Qur'an that they're hearing every single night in Taraweeh? Isn't it time? Hasn't the time come that this Qur'an, that it affects your heart? We know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if the Qur'an were to be revealed on a mountain, the mountain would crumble. So what's up with our hearts then that are so hard that when we hear the beautiful recitation of Qur'an, we're not drained into, in tears? What's, what's going on with us? We're not affected. Isn't it time that you're affected? And if you're not being affected, ask Allah that tonight when you pray Tarawi, your heart is affected. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse, hasn't the time come? Hasn't enough Ramadan's passed? that we haven't made a change. Hasn't the time come? Hasn't it passed already? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is our Rahman. So He gives us chance after chance after chance to make a change and to return to Him. Another example, and I mentioned this scholar two weeks ago, Malik ibn Dinar. Malik ibn Dinar, another great scholar. If you go home and Google him, you find so many amazing things he did in his life. But he wasn't always like that. It would shock you and it would surprise you that this scholar, this great scholar, he used to be an alcoholic. And not just a normal alcoholic, he was a serious alcoholic. He had a serious problem. And he never used to pray. He used to drink so much that when the time came for marriage, no one would give their daughter to him. No one. Because they knew the kind of person that he was. And so in order to get a wife, he had to go and buy a slave and marry her. That's the kind of person he was. And then he had a child with this slave. He had a daughter. And one day he was drunk, he was playing with her, and he killed her. So here's a man who used to drink alcohol. He used to never pray. He killed a an innocent child. But he understood, even despite all that, that Allah is a Rahman. There's always a door open for you and I to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And definitely we haven't come to this level of sin, which is why I bring these examples. These are very extreme examples. And another example, another scholar, Abdullah ibn Mubarak, rahimahullah, another great scholar. And he as well, he used to drink all the time. He used to throw parties. He used to throw parties. He used to have raves, you can say, and bring people to his house to drink alcohol. He used to play instruments. And again, him, he became a great scholar because he understood that there's always a room in this deen for us to make change. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ar-Rahman. And when you make a change, any sin you used to commit, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do to it? He turns it into good deeds. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this verse is the central topic of today's khutbah. That hasn't the time come? Hasn't it come, my dear brothers and sisters, that we make a change? That this Ramadan is the one that we wake up and turn closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Remember, we have two-thirds of Ramadan left. The first step towards making a change is to understand the potential for good that we have. Shaitan wants to make us feel like crap, for lack of a better word, for the entire year. Feel like we're worthless, feel like we can't do anything good. You're not going to get out of this rut. You can't do any better. Don't try to put on a beard and then make people think you're a mufti or something, or an imam. Don't play any tricks. He wants to pull you back from doing anything good. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us over and over in the Qur'an how priceless we are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Nur, Nurun ala Nur, that the Qur'an is a Nur. And this second Nur is the light inside of us. Allah tells us we have a light inside of us. He's breathed life into us. Our soul is precious. We have our soul which is starving for ibadah, starving for worship, which is why in this month, when we worship Allah, there's no one in this room, brother or sister, who doesn't feel a peace of mind, a state of calmness, a serenity. You're not yelling at your wife anymore. You're not getting angry. You're not cursing. So much peace of mind. Where is this coming from? Because of that soul inside which is starving for the worship of Allah. And so that is a sign for you and me. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we heard this last week in Surah Baqarah, يُخْرِجُونَ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النور. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always pulling people out of darknesses into light. And it doesn't sound right in you know, English grammar, darknesses 
into light. But that's the translation. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us that whatever darkness you're involved in, and there's a plurality of darkness, a person can be one who doesn't pray outside of Ramadan. They drink alcohol. They have a girlfriend. They're doing so many, dark, so many things to darken their soul. Whatever darkness you may, have, you may be involved in, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pull you out of that darkness, bring you into the one light of Islam, if you just make the effort. If we just made dua, Ya Allah, take me out of darkness, bring me into light. Purify my heart. If we just asked for it, Allah would give it to us. There's a hadith the Prophet said, if you make dua asking for Jannah, just three times a day, Allahumma inni asaluka al-Jannah, Allahumma inni asaluka al-Jannah, Allahumma inni asaluka al-Jannah. If you just ask for Jannah three times a day, what does Jannah do? It implores Allah, Ya Allah, allow this slave to enter Jannah. That's our problem, we just don't ask. All you need to do is ask, and the change will come, and the doors of Jannah will open up for you. Also, again, this first step to making a change, understanding the good we have inside of us. If you could please move up a little bit, inshallah, there's still brothers that are trying to squeeze in. There's a lot of spaces. Fill in all the gaps, inshallah. Another sign that we have good inside of us, you have potential for good. And this is, inshallah, motiva motivation. So you push away those thoughts from shaitan that's telling you, you're worthless, man. You can't make that change. The Prophet ﷺ told us a beautiful hadith, and I love this hadith. I can't believe, I, you know, so much of my life went on, I didn't hear this hadith. Abu Huraira radiallahu an, he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that people are like mines of silver and gold. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying that you and you and you and you, you're a gold mine. What's the value of gold nowadays? It's almost priceless, right? That's the, if you want to invest in a good commodity, invest in gold. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying you are a gold mine. You are worth so much in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you earn His Jannah if you just obey Him in the simple commands He's given us. You have so much potential for good. You think you're here and you can be there. If you just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to change you and you realize the potential for good that you have. So my dear brothers and sisters, we have 20 days left in Ramadan. Let's take advantage to make sure that it's not like previous Ramadans and that we're not the same. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to make people that return to Him, to make sincere tawbah to Him. As I take a seat, make dua to Allah, asking Him to make you a person that makes a change this Ramadan. Akuli kawli hadha, mustaqfulakum. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. So, what's our action plan for change? Inshallah, I want to lay out six steps for how we can make a change this Ramadan. If you can just grab one of them, that's good enough, Inshallah. I'm going to give you six. Number one, first and foremost, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want to make that change, if you want to finally become a good Muslim, following the Prophet in his way, if you want to have the courage to start growing a beard, if you want to have a courage to start putting on hijab, if you want to have that courage, it's not going to come from you alone. It's going to come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any good we have in our life, it's not from our own doing. It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessing. If you have a marriage and it's blessed, it's not because you and your wife are smart and you figured it out. It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So every good we have starts and ends with dua. Take advantage of the dua. Take advantage of dua at the time of breaking your fast. Take advantage of dua any time during the day, when you're in the elevator at work, when you're in the subway, when you're on the bus. Make dua throughout Ramadan. One thing I recommend that you do, and it's something that I did which really helps, make a list. When you go home today, take out a piece of paper, write down all the things that you need, all the things that you want. Make a note to make dua for your parents who passed away, who we sometimes forget to make dua for, your grandparents who passed away. Make a dua list today. Again, you have 20 days to take advantage. Don't give up this advantage. Go home, make a dua list. Make this dua, again, when breaking your fast, make the dua when you're in sujood. Don't forget about the sujood. I know the sujood sometimes it's very short. So one thing you can do, you mean the first sujood, make dua for your parents. In the second sujood, make dua Allah forgive your sins. In the third sujood, make dua you get some knowledge. In the fourth, you get a job, you find a wife. Take advantage of every single sajda in Tarawih. How much do we have? We have 16. 
Make sure every sajda, you're making a special dua to Allah. And of course in English. It's sunnah prayers, you're allowed to make dua in English or Urdu, whatever language you're comfortable with. Take advantage of every single moment to make dua. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will certainly answer your dua. Allah will definitely answer your dua. And if He doesn't answer it in a way that you see it in this world, it only means because He's holding back something better for you in the next. Because you might be asking for that house, but He knows it'll be a fitna for you. And it'll hurt you and cause you more harm in your deen. So He holds back and He gives you a palace in Jannah. But you have to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's number one. Number two, make sure you're doing muhasaba. Make sure you're doing reflection. And we spoke about this last week. Make sure you're reflecting throughout this month. And I'll repeat the hadith, inshallah, for the benefit of those who weren't there. The Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانًا إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِ Whoever fasts in Ramadan with sincerity and ihtisab, meaning reflection, they will be forgiven all their sins. Everyone wants their sins to be forgiven in Ramadan. But there's two conditions. One, that you fast with sincerity. And two, that you spend your time in reflection. You have to reflect if you want to move away from those bad things you used to do, for those things you're ashamed of. You have to spend time in reflection, doing muhasaba. And muhasaba, doing reflection, it's more valuable than the worship. And I'm not saying something sacrilegious here. This is something the scholars agree upon. One of the scholars, he said that to think for one hour about your life, about where it's going, about what you've been doing, about what you want to do, to think for one hour, it's more valuable in the sight of Allah than 1,000 hours of worship. So yes, do the taraweeh, but don't say that's it, and he's doing the prayer for me and I'm covered. No, we're all accountable for our own souls. So make sure you're spending this time in reflection. And it's a great time for reflection because when you're not eating, when you're not fulfilling your sexual desires, that's a time you can just think. It's a break to spend that time in reflection, thinking how can I make a change? And this muhasaba, this reflection, it's something the scholars, they used to take seriously. You might know a man by the name of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. He used to, it was known that when he wanted to reflect, he would go out to the ocean, not the ocean, but the water nearby, the sea. He would go by the water and he would reflect. Maybe one morning after Fajr, go to the beach, go to Jones Beach, go to you know, Rockaway, just look at the water. It's very calming, very relaxing. And use that as a way to reflect. That's what the scholars did. So let's follow what the scholars did. Take yourself outside of your home. You're not, you can't just reflect in your home. You need to change your environment. Again, another scholar by the name of Habib al adawiyah he used to go on the roof of his house and just reflect. Again, because you can't do it when you're in the same surroundings. You know, the word for a traveler in Arabic, it's musafir, right? And this comes from a word which means to discover. Because once you travel outside of your village, you travel outside of your city, you leave New York, go to Jersey, go to Philly, you're outside of your surroundings, that's when your mind is free, and that's when you can discover yourself. And that's the, the beauty of the Arabic language. So musafir, person who travels, but a person who is involved in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, in self-discovery. So you need to leave your home, go out somewhere, go to a masjid where people don't know you, where you're not going to spend the whole time talking. Go to an Arab masjid if you're, if you're Guyanese. Go to a Guyanese masjid if you're Arab. You know, go, from, go to a place you're not comfortable with, where you're just going to be focused on that salah so that you can do some true reflection. And there was another scholar, I guess he was rich. He had a special home he would go to just on Fridays. So he had a special apartment, a special home. He would leave his family, leave his kids, and he would spend his entire day there just to reflect. And that's the importance of reflection. And again, it's a condition for us to be forgiven in this month. Number three. Action plan, and I put this in the middle, and it's one of the most important points that I want to share today, which is one of the main things we need to do as an action plan for Ramadan is leave sinning. All of it. Reflect upon the things you did before Ramadan that you do not like about yourself. Look at how you spend two hours praying Taraweeh, right, in Ramadan, and before Ramadan you may have spent four hours on Netflix, or four hours on Hulu or YouTube, just wasting your life away which is not the way to spend our time. We need to leave sin. Ibn al-Jawzi, rahimahullah, he said, if you walk and fall, find out what made you fall. If you're sinning, find out what's the source that's causing you to sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَا تَتَّبِيُوا خُطُوَاتِ shaitan." He doesn't say, don't follow shaitan. He says, don't follow the footsteps of shaitan. So what is it that's causing you to fall into sin? What's the environment that you're putting yourself in? That you, you can't get off that bad habit that you have. Change the environment. If it's the computer in your bedroom, put it in your living room. Whatever you need to do, 
maybe you need to put some blocks on your cell phone so you can't visit certain websites. Do what you need to do to protect yourself from committing sin. That's the wisdom. And so for Ramadan, of course, I said before, leave everything. But if you really want to be practical and you want to leave sin, what we need to do today, pick one thing among the sins we used to commit and pick the worst, pick the greatest, because you want to start with the biggest. Pick the biggest sin you used to commit and make that your target. Make that the dua that you're making to Allah. You're not doing it to anyone. We don't have confession in this deen. You go to confess to the Imam your sins. You confess to Allah. Ya Allah, I have this weakness. I want to get over it. Ask to be saved from that sin. And when you make, when you make your sujood tonight, when you make your sujood you know, shortly in a couple of minutes. So identify the one sin that you have the biggest problem with and make sure that's your goal for this month. And wallahi, if you get rid of that one sin, of course everything else is going to trickle. Because now you're in that mode of overcoming the overcoming the, 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 your, your desires. And at the same time, replace it with something good. Look at one good deed you can do after Ramadan. Maybe it's fasting one, one day a month. Maybe it's just doing an extra two rakah once a month. Make it small, make it easy on yourself. But make, this is how you're going to make the change. It's with small steps. So leave a big sin and think of something good you want to continue to do after Ramadan. Also, in making this change, again, as a reminder, understand that the doors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are always open. The biggest trick shaitan plays on us is that you're not good enough. You know, when a person commits a sin, let's say a, let's say a person doesn't pray, and it's a sin. The biggest trick shaitan plays on you is that, you know what, man? You don't pray, don't make dua. Why is Allah going to answer your dua? And shaitan puts in our heads, Allah cannot forgive me for all the sins I've done. Allah cannot forgive me. And the scholars say, when a person makes that statement, Allah cannot forgive me, that is the bigger sin than whatever sin they're doing. So if a person was drinking alcohol, if a person had a girlfriend, a person wasn't praying, that's a sin. But for a person to ever say or think, Allah cannot forgive me, they're taking away this name, Ar-Rahman, which is a bigger sin. So we should never let shaitan play this trick on us. That Allah SWT cannot forgive us. That the doors of forgiveness are closed for us. The doors are always open. And we should always hang on to whatever good that we do. Don't leave a good deed thinking, you know what man, I, this is the only good deed I do. I might as well just leave this too and just, just live my life. Hang on to whatever good you do, which is why I stressed, focus on something small and hold on to it. It can save you in the long run. And there's an example I wanted to share. There was another scholar by the name of Abu Bakr al-Shibri. Abu Bakr al-Shibri. And he also used to steal before he was a practicing Muslim. He also used to steal. And one day he was stealing with his, he had his friends, his posse, and they, and, they, and they robbed a caravan that had food. And so they got the food together, and his friends were eating the food, and they turned to him and said, aren't you going to join us and eat? And he said, no, I'm fasting. But he's a thief. Why is he fasting? And any one of us would say, man, that's contradictory. He's a hypocrite. How can he steal and, and then be fasting at the same time? But because of that fasting, eventually one day, Eventually one day, the person who was robbed, he saw that man making tawaf around the Kaaba. And he saw him and he smiled. And, he re and that person, when he, when he spoke to him, he said, you used to steal, what happened? And he said, you know, I used to do everything haram, everything wrong, and the only good deed I used to do, I used to fast. And because of that fasting, because of that connection I maintained with Allah, Allah guided me. And this also shows the power of fasting. But the lesson I wanted to give you here is hang on to whatever good you do and do not belittle it in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't let shaitan think what you're doing is not good enough. It could save you. And lastly, the last piece of advice I wanted to give in order to make change. And this may be taken the wrong way, but inshallah I'll cover it in a, in a way that, that it's not. The biggest way and the simplest way to make a change, look at the company that you keep. And this is especially for my young brothers in junior high school and high school. Look at the company that you keep. The Prophet وسلم, he said, Al Maru ala dini khalilihi. A person is on the religion of their friends. And that doesn't just mean if your friend is Christian, I'm going to become Christian. If your friend is Hindu, he's going to become Hindu. No. Over here, it means deen, it means their way of life. Meaning, if your friend is someone who drinks, eventually you're going to fall into drinking as well. If your friend is one who has girlfriends, eventually you're going to fall into that as well. If your friend is a girl and she doesn't dress properly, you too, you're going to start dressing improperly. Al-maru ala dini khalilihi. If you want to make a change in the simplest way, just look at the company that you keep and strive to have friends who are better than you in, in, terms, of their, uh, in terms of their religion. Not that they're going to put you down, but they're going to lift you up. Look for a good company that's going to give you good advice. And that's one of the simplest ways to make a change. 
So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us because only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can help us. We ask Allah to help us to make a change in this Ramadan. We ask Him to give us the ability to leave those sayi'at, to leave those sins we used to commit before Ramadan. We ask Allah to help us to capture some of the good we did in this Ramadan and maintain it in our life moving forward. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama salaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidu majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna ka hamidu majid. Allahumma inna ka afu wa karim un tuhibbu al afu wa faafu anna bi rahmatik ya ghafur. Rabbi rahm hama kama rabbayani saghira. Rabbana zhulamna anfusna wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lana kunanna min al khasirin. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al akhiratu hasana. وكنا ذا بنار واقم الصلاة